Hello, everybody. My name is Carol Marks, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. This podcast is a member of Give Me Liberty Media. Now, let's get right to it. This intro is way too long. Two more days till we vote. Now, do you count today? So that would be three more days. Or do you count Tuesday? That'd be two more. How many more days do we have until we Tuesday? We just jumped right into that. We didn't we did. say good morning. No, we didn't. Good morning, one and all. <laughs> Welcome to Sunday morning. It's a beautiful day. <clears throat> and it's first day of fall back. Oh, yes, that's right. We have fallen back. That's right. We got an extra hour of sleep, which we took advantage of. I can see it's already getting daylight outside. Absolutely, it is. I don't know. Do you count today as a day or do you count tomorrow as a day? Well, you definitely count tomorrow as a day. Well, tomorrow's a day because it's Monday and Monday's always a day. <laughs> Monday always lasts longer than regular days, so I guess that... I'm going to count two more days. Two more days till we vote. Because Tuesday is the day. Tuesday's the day, yes. Yes. I'll count today and Monday. I'm still just totally perplexed in a way that the... You know, I'm, I'm not so much worried about voting and... You know, I want the outcome, of course, to be the way y'all know I want it to be. But how in the hell is it possible that it would take them actually us 10 days, up to 10 to 7 to 10 days, to know who wins this election? I thought you were going to say something else. I thought you were going to say, how in the hell is Kamala this close with Donald? That too. But yes, how? Well, well, why is it going to take two, three weeks to count? That's BS. That is bullshit. Uh, I will say it. I won't glitterize it and put <laughs> glitterize it. Yeah, glitterize it and put sprinkles on top of it. <laughs> That'll be a quote from Mister Sean. Absolutely, I'm not going to glitterize this. Yeah, I come up with new good ones every other, yeah. you know, some some days. I live to come up with a quote that Mister Sean's and Jubilates will will put out there for me. <laughs> There's one right there. I live to come up with a quote. Uh huh. That'll be it. so. Anyway, you know, I'm not putting. Uh, I'm, now I'm trying to make them up <laughs> McDonald's Happy Land sauce yeah. on it, uh, <laughs> on it. But you know, how can we? How can uh, you know mi- millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people, when the lottery gets to eight hundred thousand dollars, buy a, millions and millions and millions <laughs> of tickets, many more tickets that are are bought than election ballots are cast. And by God, at 12 o'clock that night, we know who the hell won the lottery. We know what store they were in, where it was purchased, everything. But we can't count these votes. We don't know. Well, you know, so, well, sh- hog hell. Well, it's because they got away from the day of voting. Oh, absolutely. We have all this mail-in crap. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, now, absentee balloting, I'm all for, because yeah. we actually had to do that one yeah. year when we went on our honeymoon. Yeah, we were, we were going to be out of the country when we voted. that's a very specialized thing that and happens. for military members. And they all have to be in before the day. Yes. You know, we had to have been before we, sure did. we went, before we left, and before the day. They were in. You know, like that Monday or something. I can't remember. Yeah. But they were all in and done, really. And, of course, nobody knew who had voted or the count of those votes or anything. You know, I think those were all tabulated that day as well as far as, you know, the the day of the election. Mm-hmm. And so, and then at the end of the day, you know, you could figure out who the hell won the election. It was easy, simple. But no. Now it's mail in, push in, phone in, write in, run in, mail in, carry in, fly in, <laughs> uh, drag absentee, in, absentee, absentee, absentee plus, absentee, you it's know, just, crawling down the road. It's out of hand. Yeah. And I just think it's stupid that no. they say they're going to take weeks to count. That and, That's nonsense, and it needs to be put to, into. And we know it's manipulation. It's manipulation but, of the polls. It's manipulation. You know, part of that. And whole, yet we sit here and do nothing and let the courts take care of it. Yeah. We That has gotten out of hand, too. And, of course, the courts are, you know, becoming politicized as well. So, anyway. <sighs> it was a fun day of football. 
Yes, to tell us about the Georgia Florida game. <laughs> well, the Georgia Florida game was a, an ugly game, <sighs> but it was a, you know a win for Georgia, which of course, as you know, I'm a Georgia fan, so you know, we always used to say, you know, if we could pick one game of the year to win and lose the rest of them, we'd pick this one. We'll beat Florida, and so we beat Florida. Um, like I say, it wasn't a beautiful thing. Uh, there were a lot of injuries. Uh, but the, both teams played really hard, and there wasn't a lot of of that uh, false macho bravado, you know, people yelling and screaming and piss bumping and you know p- beating the chest. It was just a good football game, so I was very happy with it. Good, very happy with it. Good, yeah. I, I didn't hear a lot of yelling and screaming no, from you. So. Uh-uh. We had the tyke is here yesterday too. He had such a good time. Oh my gosh. It's so funny, you know. He he has such a good time and he enjoys himself, of course. And the 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 funny part now <laughs> is that uh, when you tell him, "Okay, well, it's time to go home," he's no, I don't want to go home. <laughs> he kind of gets a little pouty. He, he pouty. doesn't throw a fit or anything. He doesn't cry. No, but he doesn't want to go home. He wants to stay. He gets a little droopy and uh, I don't want to go. I want to stay here. It's fun. It's fun here. <laughs> Like, well, that's good. And it doesn't last long, though. I put him in. He doesn't try. He doesn't cry. He doesn't struggle. He doesn't give us a fit. He, he goes ahead and gets in the car. Mm-hmm. I get him over there to his house. We do a lot of distracting from it as well, though, to keep him from it. But but still, he's, and he's fine. He's fine with it. Daddy comes out to greet us, and he's all happy again. Yeah. So. He, he loves his daddy. <laughs> he loves his he daddy. He loves his mommy, too. Yeah. But, we pulled up in, uh, to the driveway, and the, Ashley's car, I think, was there, and he's said mommy mm-hmm. mommy let's see yes. mommy he loves both his parents yes he, they're good parents it's, it's really good to see that he, he you know child knows he's home and, mm-hmm. and he's like oh excited every mm-hmm. time he sees his parents mm-hmm. he's excited yeah and every time he sees us he's excited yep. too so yep. he's a good boy yeah he's a good smart smart young man yep uh-huh so yeah. he did puzzles yesterday mm-hmm. and he didn't play a whole lot with his cars, a little bit. He read books. He liked, put, he liked putting together those puzzles. Yeah, and I, I I love the fact that he makes time out of his busy schedule when he's here to get a book, and he'll book, and he'll get a book, and he'll come sit up in my lap, and, <laughs> and two or three books we'll read, uh, you know. But he mm-hmm. makes a point. He made, It's almost like he makes a point. It's like, okay, read time. Mm-hmm. And he'll grab yeah. a book and come, mm-hmm. you know, grab it and come jump up with me and, you know, read this one. Read. Then he'll go back over and get another one. Read this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he even had one of the ones that I was like, wow, this is not good. He, he'll never sit through this book. And he's brought it over to me two or three times. Mm-hmm. Read this one. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he played with his magnet storyboard for a long time too he loves that little thing yeah he does and he's not like most kids that would get him out and throw him all over the place and you know put him in their mouths or whatever no. or tear up the paper he actually sits there and plays with it mm-hmm. and takes care of it yeah he does yeah he does all right and he ate we discovered he likes well, tomato soup yes he does like tomato soup and oh yeah and by the way uh, Ohio State did beat Penn State. Yes. Uh, which was a big win. Right. And Texas A&M, uh, who was the, uh, you know, after after they beat LSU, everybody was yelling and screaming, oh, Texas is going to be it. That's going to be where everything is. Texas, Texas A&M, blah, blah, blah. South Carolina just routed Texas A&M last night. That was hilarious. And there were some other big games. Oregon has stepped up and shown us that they are a contender. And one of the things I was going to talk about there, too, was uh, very quickly, Georgia won the national championship game a couple of years ago, beating Ohio State. And the guy named Dan Lanning was the uh, defensive coordinator. And then the next year, the first game out, Georgia played Oregon and walloped them in that game. Uh, The head coach there was in his first game, as a head coach in a Division One team was a guy named Dan Lanning. It was Georgia's offensive coordinator, our defensive coordinator. And now, as we look at the season going on, Oregon, with a coach named Dan Lanning, who was Kirby's 
defensive coordinator is number one and Georgia's number two. So it's kind of interesting to see where those cards fall. That was something I was going to just mm-hmm. say for a second. That mm-hmm. was very interesting. Mm-hmm. But, yes, uh, the highlight of the day, of course, though, was – our our little can cam. Yes. Yeah. Such a sweet boy. Um, not to change the subject. We got some good pictures of him too. Yes, we did. Um <laughs> did Alabama play? Yeah, they played by and they lost by three. They played by, what's that? That's a that's a joke. They didn't have a game. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> that's a joke amongst people. Yeah, they played by <laughs> and they lost. <laughs> okay. And the oh, and one other thing. Congratulations to Vanderbilt. The the state champions of Alabama this year, they beat Auburn. Okay. <laughs> Somebody was on, one of the, one of the, I think it was one of the Alabama fans was on Twitter and he's saying, he was yelling, it's like, ah, y'all lost to Auburn too, blah, blah, blah. Now, you know, I don't see y'all out here yelling and screaming about it. Ah. So I had to say back to him, I said, you know, y'all both lost to Alabama this, or to Vanderbilt this year. I guess that's a feather in your cap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I said qu- quality losses. That's what I said. Mm-hmm. Quality losses to, to Vanderbilt. I guess y'all got that. So anyway, go, moving on. All right, moving on. Let's do a couple of Dear Abbeys. I'm looking forward to it. All right, here we go. Dear Abby, I want to rekindle a relationship with my married ex-husband. Oh, boy. I have been divorced from my ex-husband, Paul, for 20 years. I never remarried. The divorce was mostly my fault because I was unfaithful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, never tried to save our, I never tried to save our marriage. He immediately started dating and remarried 18 months later. Hmm. We, have, a year and a half we have remained friends due to having four children and now grandchildren. I get along with his wife as well. Okay. Trouble all the yeah. way around. During the pandemic, I, along with a grown child, moved across the country. Paul and his wife followed us. We live about an hour apart. As it worked out, three of our four kids have also moved to be near us. Over the last two years, I have realized that I miss Paul and have hopes of us being together again. Oh, boy. He does not know this. I, I have never known. I have never disrespected his marriage or his current wife in any way. This has been 20 years. Yeah. Something's, what's wrong? With, what is up with that? Move 20 on. 20 years. Now, come on. They have a unique relationship because they often spend time apart and travel to see their families with each other. I think they also occasionally vacation separately. Okay, that's weird. I know this isn't necessarily a measure of their love or commitment, but my gut tells me it's not the oh, it's not the marriage they want people to believe it is. My gut also tells me, yeah, your gut has been wrong for a long time there, lady. You gut told you to cheat on your husband. My gut also tells me he may feel the same way I do. I often think he wishes he had done more to help save our marriage. It's been 20 years. Should I tell him how I feel? I'm happy in my life, but I don't. I don't want to regret not speaking up. If there's a chance, we can reunite and be the family I know God intended us to be. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Any advice? Regretful in Alabama. This is Alabama. Oh, Oh boy. I wonder who this, do we we know them? Do we know this person? (laughs) What do you think about that? I say leave it alone. I say you need to go to a psychologist and work out your problems. That's your answer to everything. To all these. Yeah, you well, need. You know, if I'm writing Dear Abby, I'm already needing a psychologist. That's true. You know, so that's that's the first part. I, I ain't gonna glitterize it. Look, she already ruined her own marriage by cheating. Don't yeah. ruin this marriage yeah. by cheating. Don't do it. Yeah, you're making amends by not doing that again. Mm. Do not do it. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's. My... Yeah, she needs to. Why is she not remarried? Why is she? Well, that might be a problem right there. Why? Not that. She had remarried, but why does she not have another man in her life after twenty years? Well, I mean, sorry, she, maybe men, men have got, <laughs> maybe men have caught on to her. <clears throat> yeah. Like no, uh, maybe there's just something about you that says, you know, no, I don't really, no, this isn't good. Just enjoy your grandchildren. Really, really, yeah, and go to go to church. Yes, <laughs> yes, do you uh, offer your time in service to something else? Really, really, mm. you know, I mean. That many kids, 20 years, you're probably getting close to being a grandparent. Well, she is a grandparent. Okay, that's right. So you don't really, you know, come on, man. 
Come on, man. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Yeah, well, let's see what Dear Abby has to say to her. All right. Dear Regretful, my goodness, you are certainly having a self-serving conversation with God you should have spoken to before you committed adultery and blew up your marriage. Wow, dear Abby. Get her. There you go. (laughs) While it may seem unusual to you, many couples visit their families separately, and some even take short vacations if their spouses aren't interested. Do yourself a favor and look for some romance elsewhere. Your ex and his wife might greatly appreciate it if you did. (laughs) <laughs> Please consider it before possibly embarrassing yourself. Mm-hmm. Amen. Good one. Amen. Amen. I say to Fine, you. Finally, Digger Abby gets one right. Yes. All right. Well, <laughs> let's see. What else do we have up here? Let's see. Let's see. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. All right. We're going to. Okay. We're going to do one more and then we're going to call it a day. Dear Abby, a woman I've known and been friends with for over 40 years, has gradually changed. She has developed some health problems, and whenever she calls me, all she talks about are her ailments and treatments. When we manage to discuss other things, she turns the subject to her political views, which are different from mine. I try to be noncommittal or change the subject, but it's getting harder and harder. I now cringe when I see her caller ID. She has other friends, so I don't know why she dumps this stuff on me. I feel our friendship has run its course, and I like to end it with as little pain as possible. How can I do that? Wow, that's not really a friend if you ask me. Mm. But, you know, if you have different political views, so what? Tell her yours. Maybe she'll stop calling. (laughs) Well, there you you, you hit the nail on the head. You probably, when she's yelling and screaming, I shouldn't say yelling and screaming, when she's telling your political features, going, uh huh, yeah, okay, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, tell her, you know, hey, you know, these are my political views. Mm-hmm. And either, you know, you know, if, if, if it's one of those things, uh, if you if you keep sharing something like that, she's probably going to quit talking about hers. Yeah, but and then your friendship can go on if it's going to go on or not go on if it's not going to go on. But I, mean, I liked your advice. Yeah, well, and the woman also seems a little Pollyanna. I mean, do you think all friendships are rainbows and puppies and good and positive? Yeah. You're going to have issues with friendships. Absolutely. That's what makes, you know, makes you different with each other. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Everybody has to agree now and be in their groups. Right. Be have- all alike. I mean, that's what happens. You know, we have so many groups now that you're, if you're not in this group or that group or whatever. Right. It's insane. Yeah. So, I would say just talk about your things, and if, and if that that friendship continues on with the differences, then it does. If it does, so what? All right, let's see what dear Abby has to say. Okay. Dear used up, this shouldn't be too difficult. The next time you talk and she raises the subject of politics, speak up and tell her you're not only don't agree, but the plan to vote for the candidate from the opposite political party. I'll bet she drops you like a hot potato. Well, there you have it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that was a made-up one. That was a made-up one, mm, if I ever read one. Absolutely. All right, we need a question of the day. All right, I'm going to ask the question of the day since I came up with it. Okay. We've got Halloween past us. It's, we're in November. Thanksgiving is coming up, though. When do you put your Christmas decorations slash tree up? That's a very good question. My thinking would be, and the way I like to look at it is, after Thanksgiving. Yes. Because I like Thanksgiving. I do, too. I love Thanksgiving. I do, too. So Christmas doesn't start till after Thanksgiving. I agree. Period. you got to have some, but we don't have any kind of decorations for Thanksgiving, though. We put out a cornucopia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it, you know, regardless of whether you put Thanksgiving decorations out or not, which we don't, you don't put the Christmas tree up till after Thanksgiving. Yes. Period. I agree. I agree. The day after, the weekend after, you could do it the day after, you can the put weekend it up after. On Friday after. Black Friday. My yes. God, I mm-hmm. don't care. Yeah. But it doesn't go up till after Thanksgiving. Agreed. All right, we got to go. Go, dogs. <laughs> What's that? What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy!